And we're live. And we're live. How are we all feeling, everybody? All right. Welcome to the Sauzcast. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. Special episode talking dating, relationships, and a little bit of drama. Special guests in the house. <laughs> the boys taking over the internet. You've seen them or your girl has seen them. That's for sure. <laughs> or hates them. Or hates them. And we're talking about fresh and fit in the house. How you guys feeling? Hey, man. We're doing good. Uh, thank you for having us on the show. No good, worries, man. bro. We're glad to be here. Who drove here? This I guy. drove. Okay. Grandma. <laughs> Grandma driving here. Sorry hey, that we're a little bit late. And then you guys might recognize our Latina living limitless Jenny Valdez in the What's house. What's up, everyone? And then our white girl living with restrictions, <laughs> Amber Joy We can't Joy make that Lane. the intro every we, time. Oh, hey, now. you we set gotta, it up. We got to rebrand You that. set it up. Anyway, we got a special show. We got a lot of topics. We're going to have discussions. We're going to have some discourse. We might have some debates, but we're all going to be friends. And, you know, maybe you meet somebody outside after the show. All right, that well. <laughs> so let's just start off uh, with, like, the, what happened last night because you guys met last night and then we'll get into the rest of the show so you were on the infamous fresh and fit show last night the after hour show oh ironically God. she's here today that we could not set this up like we did not plan this we up really didn't. yeah jenny i'm sorry amber what happened uh, let and then we'll do you let want, the guys you want them to talk about it first? i don't know you were there you go first. You can go first. jorge can you turn me up a little bit please it's um, so funny i definitely knew a little bit of what I was getting into. I knew it was going to be wild. I knew that it was going to be heated and passionate. And I'm a passionate person, but I have class and I have like respect for people. And so I was ready. And I feel like I held my own during the during the conversation. Like yeah. I wasn't quiet. Um, it got a little heated with Tommy, but um, I think you guys made some very interesting points. I didn't love always the way you presented them. And I think that you could have expanded. And I'm excited to do that here in a more calm environment with some very educated people next to me. Mm. But um the ending of that uh, was something I've never experienced in my life before, um, that level of energy. Uh, uh, I honestly don't even know exactly the narrative, but um, one of the girls, Shay, and Tommy, was, who was the special guest, yeah. were in a very heated argument, which started about uh, his content that he posts on Instagram, and it evolved, I guess, into a drama that they had that I don't know if anybody knew about. But we might have a clip. Do we have this? Is yeah. it okay if we show this? Uh, yeah, go uh, ahead. I mean, uh, okay. it's all over just the be, internet. Over so. the yeah, yeah, just just be careful. It's not because uh, mind some you, of this it is... was after like four hours. We were live. Yeah. Like it yeah, was you, almost over. You guys over. go for a long time. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was at the end. We were like, I was hungry. I was tired. It was like, and she goes, one more thing. It it was yeah, three hours and three hours and like fifteen minutes. And I Eric, had to can like, the, can the people see yeah. what's going on if you when you play it? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see what's going on, and then we'll let. For, can you turn the volume up? We anticipate having a long, fruitful relationship with Rosetta Stone. Several hundred band members have already registered for lessons. What, well, Eric, some, uh, uh, Eric, I have different volume. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, a newscast going on. <laughs> we might have another tab open. That's a funny dichotomy, though. <laughs> Several hundred band members. Yeah. <laughs> Happens to us all the time. So it's all good, man. Well, guys, this is show business, baby. Yeah, we're yeah, live yeah. We're this live. Is Trust me, bro. This, this is what happens, dude. We're so used to this. This is every day. Like yeah, we don't even. Yeah. We're not even bad. I will say, like while this. he's pulling this up, I was on your guys' uh, show yeah. with, with Rolo. Shout out to Rolo Tomasi yeah, in the Rolo house Tomasi. who was here last week. Shout out to him. Inviting me guys down here, and we and we met. Thank you for being so gracious. You, I mean, the whole operation that you guys are running. You were there. I mean, it's anything no, it's could incredible. go wrong at any different moment. It is a lot of movement parts, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So he's working hard. You're just chilling on the couch. <laughs> hey, social media. Occasionally, your social yeah, media. Yeah, your social media. Social he's media, like sound man. props. Yeah. Eric, are we ready, sir? <laughs> oh man. Okay. You know what Myron stands up, it's getting real. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where I ran. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I had to get in there. You might yeah. wanna. Uh, he really tried to fight the girl though. You might wanna he stop. You might wanna stop, yeah, because there's gonna be some nudity. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. Like, stop it before that. Yeah. So okay, at that you. moment, right. yes. at that moment, we're in a very small <laughs> like space, and there's lots of rage and arms throwing and things throwing and fight or flight, like flight. <laughs> I'm you trying to off. get out of there. Okay. And something happened, and I've never had a panic attack before in my life. 
never. Um, but I literally couldn't breathe. I, you saw me. I yeah. was, I couldn't, I was gasping for air and I was super emotional because there's a huge fucking dude who's throwing fists at this girl and she's also going crazy. People are restraining her. We're in a very small environment and I freaked out and you were very sweet to me and you came and you calmed me down and Listen, I, I had respect for you the whole night, but when you came over and made fun of me, I was like, bro, where is your empathy? You were like, your life was never in danger. It didn't matter. I felt scared and you could not give a fuck. You were like, I'm going to make fun of you tomorrow for that. Who? Who, you, who are you talking about? Myron? Yeah. So you're saying Fresh was nice and Myron... He was, he was like, so it's not he even nice. That's, that's the Listen, good cop, bad cop good approach. Good cop, bad cop. <laughs> Myron, what would you like to say about this? I know you're a very opinionated dude. And then we're going to turn it over to Jenny for her opinion on this too. Um. Well, I guess... Uh... Fuck your feelings. I don't know, man. I, like it's, it's like it's it's just another day in the office of fresh and fit, man. Like confrontation. But you're bringing happens. girls into this environment. Like you are. You're 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 there facilitating your content and your viewership. You should at least make sure that they feel safe. And in that moment, I didn't. And it, instead of being like, "Hey, well, sorry, are well, you okay?" Let me just let me just frame this a different way. Totally understand where you're coming from. You're my home girl. You're on the show. But the, the, I'm talking about what happened with the gentleman and the lady. Like, what happened with that? Where where, where does that stand? You're, yes. Okay. Your feelings do matter. I'm not going to say fuck your feelings. However, <laughs> he's entitled to his opinion. Yeah. But what happened with the gentleman and the lady, what they were arguing about? Who wants to answer that? Basically, some stuff that he posted on his Instagram. She didn't like the way he posted certain things. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, I'm going to post what I want. You can post what you want. Just don't watch the content, which he's right. And then she struck him first. And then that's what led mm -hmm. to all that other stuff, you know, this, you know, she hit him first and, you know, obviously I'm glad I was able to get in there and break it up and it was under control, which is why. Did he swing me, I look back at, like, at her? Uh, yes. I mean, so, yes. so, so yeah, where, what's the stance so, on that? On. Like a chick swings at a dude, disrespect. So a guy shouldn't hit back. What's the rule on that? So we do it live, right? So things are fast paced. Yep. You're in the moment. It's, it's heated arguments happening and we do it live. That being said, in that environment, he felt like he was being attacked verbally and physically, right? Mm -hmm. So naturally, you're gonna to want to defend yourself and do certain things. Now she did hit him, you know. So that right there is trigger triggering. So he's gonna retaliate in a certain way. Now regarding the whole uh, fight, whatever, Myron was able to hold him back and hold and Chris was able to hold her yeah. back. Mm -hmm. So nothing happened, but it could have been bad. But we did it live, you know. We didn't expect it to happen, and that's the thing about having a live show. You never know what's gonna happen. So in that environment, we all have our role to play. Him is, he's doing the sound equipment. He's doing like the, the help people mm -hmm. stay apart. I'm doing like the consoling, all that stuff. So, we've, you know, we, we have our part to play. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was under control, man. Like yeah. it was 100% under control. Like I yeah. was able to get in there, stop it. Like it was 100% under control, which is why I didn't feel empathy because I'm like, bro, it's under control. Like it is what it is. Which I mean, you can feel, the reality You're is like. you be a really good dad. The, the reality is this. It was safe. Yeah. How you feel is really irrelevant because you were, you were safe. Like. If you didn't feel that way, I'm sorry you might have felt that way. But that's all. It was, that, that's but it. That's literally but, it. It's saying, hey, I'm sorry mm -hmm. that you felt this way. That's it. Okay, Jenny, but, it was, but, it was, but it was a safe environment. I can't control how you feel. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to you cry and hyperventilate you, and stuff, like that's on you. That's not on me. Like, I'm it was not under blaming control. you for how I feel. I'm was, just asking you to it be It was under control. It was under control. Well, I will say this. You have a lot of ladies on the show. Yeah. And ten, I was there 10 at a time, and they were all well-behaved. It is hard to basically have to deal with everyone's different feelings i'm not downplay like if she felt fucking unsafe i understand that but it's basically if i can put words in your mouth it's not your job to have to make a girl feel a certain type of way is that what, basically what you're saying i mean here's the thing it was under control mm -hmm. how everyone feels after the fact after it's under control gotcha. is on them Mm -hmm. But it was 100% under control. And just to add to it, we all have a role to play. Like I said earlier, mm -hmm. my role is to make sure everyone's cool, calm. Yeah. It's to like protect the, the threat. So yeah. it's like, you know. Yeah. You like, guys have a literal good cop, bad cop thing going on. That's pretty clear. Yeah. And you I mean, used to be we, a cop at some of some capacity, right? You used to be in law yeah. enforcement. Yeah, I'm a, I was a former special agent with Homeland Security. Right. So, I mean, I've been through much worse. Like, right. it was, it was, that's what I'm saying. Like, it so was under control. And we've we've had crazier situations on the pod. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So but it's weapons like, involved. Yeah. Oh, God so damn. Well, let, let's let, let's move on from this topic. I wanted to address that. Do you feel safe now, Amber? I feel safe. With okay. You, do you want to give want to give Myron a little dap real quick or no? <laughs> we're good. All right, we're good. <laughs> Jenny, let let me let's let's have the lovely Latina living limitless weigh in on this. Are you familiar with anything that fr fr Fresh and Fit do? Before I get into asking them questions, thoughts, concerns, questions, anything right now in your mind. Um. I, so I don't watch your podcast. I, I've heard of you guys, but I haven't really watched a podcast. So this is the first thing I'm seeing. And I'm like, whoa, this is a lot. <laughs> um, but I would like to know, um, it's called Fresh and Fit. Mm. What is the 
the message of your podcast, like the conversations you guys have, like mm. what is it, um, since this is value entertainment, the value of it, what is it um, portraying? Basically, how would you describe your show for someone that hasn't let, you yeah. know, a lot of people, have, just explain your show. There you go. Yeah, so in a nutshell, we help men become better men through fitness, finances, and understanding female nature. And we also help men as well, by example, how we live our lifestyles. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, we it's basically male self improvement. Uh, we have a Money Monday, a Womanizer Wednesday, and then like a call in show slash Fitness Friday. Mm -hmm. So we help guys with you know all aspects about becoming a better man. And then at nighttime we do the after hour show, which is five days a week. And then if we have a special guest in town or whatever, we'll do a show on like Tuesday yep. or Thursday during the day. But typically we're filming easily two to three times most of the week a day. Uh, sorry, two two times per day most of the time, and then sometimes even three times per day, depending on if we got a guest in town, et cetera. Like when we had Rolo and a couple other guys last mm -hmm. week. So So Money Mondays. Yeah. What was it? Womanizer Wednesdays. Womanizer Wednesdays. <laughs> well, we talk about uh, we talk about dating, intersexual dynamics. Yeah. Um, we talk about we might react to something. So we did the t Tinder Swindler breakdown yesterday. Yesterday, part one, and yeah. we're gonna do a second part on it because that uh, documentary, even though you know a lot of people are triggered by it, it does it. it it's a fantastic showing of uh, female nature as mm -hmm. to how uh, men can kind of deal with women and play to their emotions to be able to mm -hmm. get what they want. Now, obviously, he did it in a terrible way. Yeah. You know, he committed yeah, fraud you, and everything. Are you ladies familiar with this Tinder swindler? No. Yes. Explain that, please. Long story short, guy uses charm, looks, and affluence to con women into giving him large sums of money. He would take money, go to another girl, show her an extravagant lifestyle, build rapport mm -hmm. with her, start finessing her for wow. money, and then go to girl number three, yeah. et cetera. And just this kept is what we call fraud. in the financial world a Ponzi scheme. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he didn't have any money. He got money from a lady. He yeah. used that money to prove to this person, hey, look at these returns that I'm getting. All right, boom, boom, boom. And then basically just like in the uh, 2008 recession when everybody wants their money back, boom, who's left holding the hot potato. Yeah. So what ended up happening with this guy? So, yeah, he ended up going to jail, and he's actually out now. Like, he's on, he's on living Instagram, free. living life and everything. Can we pull so. him up, Eric? This yeah. guy, Tinder Swindler. Yeah, so... And um, Netflix did a documentary on him. Yeah. yeah he's actually suing them right now, though. Yeah, him For and that. his bodyguard okay. are, are suing it. But we analyzed the video you know, more They're from, suing Netflix? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for defamation. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, this defamation. Is yeah, yeah this right is him. Here. So, okay. And where's he from? Do you know? Israel. Uh, Israel. Wow. He's Israeli, huh? the Israeli uh, <laughs> Mac Daddy. So, um, but yeah, so we, yeah. we broke it down from a perspective to kind of let guys know why this man mm -hmm. was so successful from a dating perspective. Yeah, Even break that down. He used his skills, you know, to commit a crime, but it does not, you know, it still doesn't change the fact that he did have skills in understanding female nature where he was able to hit them at certain emotional trigger points mm -hmm. to be able to get what he wanted. Which, to be honest with you, a lot of the tactics he employed are some yeah. of the tactics that women employ on men, but it's just very rare when a man is exactly. able to reverse it and finesse a woman. Hell, when a man finesses a woman, it's a documentary and everyone knows about it. But when a right. woman finesses a man, nobody cares. It's you know just, what I'm saying? It's just, you so, know, vanilla ice cream yeah. at that point. Another day in you, office. And, uh, ladies, has, if a guy, attractive ladies, got your shit together, good looking dude, he starts asking you for money, how do you respond? Negative. Just... That is that not you're not gonna ask what it's for. How can I help? What is it? Just like I'm not giving you. If shit. I just met you and you're asking me for money, why are you asking me for money? This no, that's for family, friends, people you trust yeah. with years mm -hmm. and years, and even then, it's that it's comes with time. What do you think was so attractive about this man that they, these women were willing to give him? Did he know them for an extended period of time? Was it like a yeah, like he, he would, and quit it kind of a thing? He, and he then he would date them for several months, sometimes a year, a year plus. And, and what he, he would do, them the lifestyle. he showed them a certain lifestyle. Uh, he sold them a dream. He took them basically, on he did he have them. money from the jump? Or is it was it all just Ponzi scheme? Yeah, he was. I mean, I don't, I don't know. There was his credibility. You could Google him and his family. That's why there was like you, you could see that he was the son of a diamond tycoon. But that so, was why, right? He, but he wasn't, I, but right. So but, he basically planted stories on the internet to he created validate a, who he was. Yeah, a whole what, what personality is it? online, and you could see it by articles. You see it by like his business, mm -hmm. his planes, all that lifestyle. Wow. Yeah, Instagram. So he had the perception out there that he was somebody. So seeing that, he approaches you, hey, you know what? I want you to be my girl. I want you to live with me. I want you to take care of me. Sorry, sorry be with me. You're like, okay, you know what? If I'm his girlfriend and he needs help, he's mm -hmm. rich, so he'll pay me back. That's the whole premise of it. How, how often mean, do you think this happens? I, I mean, <laughs> well, with, between men and women, I, obviously rarely. not Yeah, not as often. But yeah, he pretty much perfectly backstopped his, his background. You know, we call yeah. that in law enforcement. You put undercover and you got to have, he has to have a certain background. So if yeah. criminals Google him or mm -hmm. look up criminal history, whatever, they're able to see okay, he is who he purports himself to be, so we're going to do business with him because he's mm -hmm. a criminal too. So this guy pretty much backstopped himself with, you know, 
showing, oh, I'm part of this family. I have this lavish lifestyle. Look at my Instagram stories. He's taking them out on planes, etc. But the women don't know mm -hmm. that he actually procured that money from another woman prior that he swindled. Yeah. I want so, to play a game with you real quick. Yeah, sure. Because, you know, you used to be in law enforcement. Yeah. Right? We gave the good cop, bad cop analogy. Yeah. Be, put on your cop hat and tell me what was wrong with what he did, illegal, whatever, and then put on your Womanizer Wednesdays hat. And be like, <laughs> this is what he did, bro. This is what we need to, like, can you break that down for me? Well, I mean, so here's the thing. This, this all happened in Europe. So, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, let's say it happened in the United States. This would be wire fraud because the girls were sending him under, money under you know, okay. a certain pretense. So that's an easy federal offense. I think it's 18 U.S.C. 1343, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. um, which is wire fraud. It's a very easy catch-all. Probably, you know, um, false statements 1001 because I'm sure he had to lie on certain documents, et cetera, uh, you know, to get some of this money. And yeah, man, I mean, if, if this happened in the United States, definitely it would, it would be federal because he's traveling all over the place. That's another thing, too. He was traveling to different countries in Europe as well. So that's why it was very difficult to go after him mm -hmm. because he'd be in one country for a couple, you know, weeks or whatever. Then he moved to another one, et cetera. And he was committing crimes all over the place. And obviously every country has different laws, different yeah. regulations, et cetera. Was so he stealing from people that weren't women as well? We I, didn't, I, didn't think I think he was. I think he was because I saw, towards the end of the documentary, you see like guys complaining as well. But um, but yeah. So from the law enforcement perspective, fraud all day, wire fraud, and then from mm -hmm. the womanizer Wednesday perspective, yes. the, the the dating side is um, he was able to play to women's emotions and he was able to hit certain trigger points that were extremely how do I say this sensitive. So what mm -hmm. he basically did for one of the girls right was he told her, hey, I want you to go apartment shopping. I want you to move in. And she spent like a whole day looking at, you know, lavish apartments, et cetera. And she's like, oh, I can feel it. Like she can almost taste the fact that they're going to be together, you know, in a, in a mm -hmm. living together. And then bam, he drops on her next day. Oh, me and my friend got assaulted. My security guard, I need help, blah, blah, blah. And it would be very strange for her to not help him after he kind of had set this dream up. So she was in a vulnerable position because mm -hmm. he had sold her the dream. And then he told her, hey, spend a day going and look in apartments so she could feel it. And then bang, he reverses it, pulls the rug from underneath her. Hey, I need $30,000 because I can't use my cards anywhere. They're tracking me. My life is in danger. And she started sending the money to him through credit cards, taking loans, etc. And he got her. Now, based on the elaborate scheme this guy put together and, and how he broke it down, you know, the guy says, babe, we're going to go, we're going to move in. Like these girls, these women are in love with him. Yeah. I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Can sure. you see why maybe now they gave him money? Like I knew you said hard no, no way. But if a guy's like, listen, we're day together, we're going to. We're going to look for apartments together. There's that emotional component right there. For sure. Does that for, put yourself in these women's shoes? What, what is your perspective like, I mean, on that? In my opinion, from I can only speak on my personal yeah, standpoint, I don't think I would put myself in that situation. Got like it. I'd be able to read that. You would call bullshit 100%, long before. 100%. Amber, any different perspective? I'm, we're just, I guess, in different periods in our life than these women. They were a slightly older demographic. They weren't in their 20s, right? I mean, they were women who were a little bit more established mm -hmm. and had money or right. were, were willing to put themselves in a financial... You're um, like, listen, instability. I can't give you 10 grand. If you wanted to go to Chipotle, I got you, baby. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I think anything that... I think women were always kind of um, a little bit more protective of just everything in general, right? I mean, physically, that's why yesterday was I was my alarm system mm -hmm. went up um, because at the end of the day, I need to pr I need to provide for myself and I need to make sure I'm okay. And financially, that is that those are my only assets right now. So to give that to somebody, no matter how much love they're like promising me, mm -hmm. unless they had given me not just an experience but actual money in the past, if they had given me fifty thousand and I knew that. Like that was something that an exchange was happening that was possible. Sure, maybe I don't know, but to give thirty thousand or to take out a loan—that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. Take out a loan, you're ruining your credit for somebody you don't know that well. No, no fucking way. Well, well, well that's the thing. They knew each other well. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> with all due, I mean, okay, I'll just say it. But whatever. Uh, Fuck my feelings. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing: women's feelings change a lot. Women, women are emotional creatures. It's easy for you guys here to say in 2020 hindsight, I would never do that. But if a man showed you a certain lifestyle, he had a bunch of social proof. He's walking around with security. He's showing you his baby mom. You're riding in private jets. You're going all around the world. He's uh, creating a, a certain lifestyle for you, right? And you really feel like this is going to be the guy. And you've been dating him for a year, whatever. Mm, I beg to differ. I think you guys would send him that some of that money. I don't think you guys would be so, oh, you know what? Nah, man, I don't believe it. Women are ruled by their had, emotions. But if he had money, why is he asking me for money? Well, here's the thing. He came up with an elaborate story. Hey, I was assaulted. My credit cards don't work anywhere, et cetera. The, these, the, uh, you know, whole The old Kevin Hart thing. My I, debit I, card I, ain't attached to I, my credit he, he card, my ask, checking account. He, I don't know the story, but he couldn't ask his family members for the money? Well, the way he 
put it was his life is in danger and he didn't want to be traced. So he had to use another name. Right. See, right. I wouldn't be with somebody whose life is in danger in this way. Like but that's some not, women are probably turned I'm, on by I'm, the, by what, the I'm, what I'm trying to say is like you, you would ask questions to receive answers. You get me? Like I'm, you're not just going to send over $30,000 without questions to be asked. I think the biggest part here is that like he, someone you cared about was in trouble and you cared about him so much to so say, you know what? Damn, mm -hmm. my soon to be husband or my my guy my, my man is in trouble i need to help him yeah that urgency there like you can't you can't come up with that on the spot it was built over time and if you care about the person you know what damn it i don't have the money right now but i'll take a loan to help him because he's gonna pay me back maybe in the future your, your rationale is gonna go out the window yeah it, and, and especially it's like i don't want to sound like a jerk or a, a sexist you or don't? whatever but women are emotional creatures like <laughs> women are, are ruled by their emotions they like that is why this guy was able to swindle he played the game to his to women's weaknesses mm -hmm. which is their emotional you know instability a lot of the times yeah and we are emotional creatures i mean thank god we we thank god we we create we life inside care. of us and we have to but, care for that life and and i think it is you do you did make a valid point of saying that he he appealed to those emotional lean, yeah, needs and needs sure. and was able to grab women i think um a lot of men who are successful get a lot of women because not only financial needs but because they're able to use that as an asset to get them in an emotional state right mm. so there's definitely value and valid statement to that i just think um i do think that asking questions and knowing more about your partner because if he did he have he had multiple women i'm assuming yeah but yeah, they honestly. didn't know that right. right but i'm just saying like so time right like if he had multiple women like what was the time i'm sure he gave him lies but as women deep down inside, you have an intuition and you're I'm able you, to they were map dating, things They were dating down. for months or a, mm -hmm. a year plus at a time. So again, we don't know everything that transpired because right. you're only going to see the highlights exactly. from, the, from the show. 100%. Yeah. But the fact that they sent the money without necessarily asking too many questions so easily and were willing to take out loans and put their neck on the line from a financial perspective to help him tells me that he built an enormous amount of rapport with these women. And he knew be, how to pick them too. Yes. He, he knew targeted how to pick them, them too. I don't but, think he would have targeted somebody but, like Jenny. But here's the thing. I know for a fact that the fact that these women gave him so much money, mm -hmm. right? When women are not built to be providers for men tells me that he played the game very well because he took women out of their element, right? Use their emotions against them and turn them into something they're not typically used to being, which is what a provider for a man. He was able to flip the roles, but you can only do that as a man if you built an enormous amount of rapport right. and attachment, which is what he did. This guy's like the James Bond of ripping off women. It's yeah. pretty impressive yeah. what he's done. And also, just yeah. to, I pointed this as well. You don't know how a woman really cares about you. It just spends her money on you because for real talk, women and their money are kind of inseparable. They care, they care about their pets, maybe themselves, but really to spend on mm -hmm. their man is not really. Uh, you don't see that too often. Well, let's talk about that then. Let's talk about relationships, money, how that works in a relationship. Do you have strong feelings or philosophies on how money should work in the relationship? Like, is anybody in a relationship currently? No. Does anybody have multiple girlfriends that they want to admit to on camera in front of people? All right, that's me, guys. I yeah. have a <laughs> um, But all right, let's yeah, start with I, you I deal with multiple girls. I'm open about that. Straight up. Yeah, I tell every girl I deal with I'm not going to be monogamous to you. That's stupid for me to do that. You tell them straight up, I will not be monogamous with yeah, you. Yeah, I think it's th okay. I think it's absolutely stupid for a man to be monogamous if he reaches a certain level. Okay, and when did this philosophy start for you? Well, oh, I grew up in a Muslim household, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, it's kind of already been something that I've seen, but um, it's just it's just an I guess an uncomfortable reality that here in the West we don't want to accept is that men and women are not the same. So a man having a lot of women is not the same as a woman having a lot of men. So once a man, and it's been that way since the beginning of time, you know, kings, sultans rulers of you know countries or whatever it may be powerful men have always had hordes of women you know they might mm -hmm. have their main woman or two right that they marry or have a relationship or children with but they'll have other women as well so i think if a man works his, his ass off to get to a certain point he should be able to enjoy the fruits of his labor and a part of that is the ability to have sexual abundance why do you think it's different from men versus women we're biologically different and that pretty much she means you know, just in that specific example uh, as far as like why can't women have multiple specific, partners. right like why is it okay for men to have multiple women but it's not okay for women to have multiple men hey no women can absolutely do whatever they want they can have multiple men too but they're not necessarily set up for it from a biological perspective and a woman that has a lot of men is not the same as a man that has a lot of women because a man that has a lot of women has to bring value to the world to some degree versus a woman that has a lot of sex with different men loses her value so you disagree how, with how that how does how does a man add value by having sex with multiple women and how does a woman devalue by having sex with multiple men because men aren't measured on their men are measured by the world 
what you create, you know, your status, your income, etc. Like men must go out into the world and create and become a somebody. And then a byproduct of them becoming somebody is women are attracted to him. There's a reason why you look at musicians, popular athletes, etc. They have a bunch of women coming after them. Why? Because they've accomplished something in the real world. And a byproduct is the women. So the women is not... Uh, but for women, it doesn't necessarily operate that way. So a man having sex with a lot of women, you know he's doing something right. Mm -hmm. If you see a guy Mara, with an attractive me, model... But why, why for women does it not operate that way? Because men and women aren't the same. We're just not the same. But you're saying like men are creators, like women are creators too. We, we, we all, we're all creation, right? Like we were born in creation. Yeah. So why are we not creators? I'm talking about creating, like going out to the world and building and becoming... In the somebody. marketplace. You're talking to speak like completely capitalistic, not like c contributing art or culture or anything like that. I mean, that could be a byproduct of it, but the, the man goes out into the world and creates a last name that that woman fights to mm -hmm. try to get. So here's what I want to know. There's a reason why a woman takes a man's last name and the man doesn't take hers. Okay, explain. I would, I would love to hear. I just explained it. The man goes because out into the what world. He's because of what he built, so his legacy. Yes. He's going and building this name and a woman wants to fight to get that name from that man. Men lead, women follow. But Myron, here's the question for you, bro. Yeah. You don't think it can be a, a, a balance? Like, know your role? Know when somebody has to lead and know when somebody has to follow? Like, both, both men and women are feminine and masculine energy. Like, I don't think a man always has to sit in his masculine energy. Men lead, women follow. Well, here, let me get to this point, Jenny. Hold on one second. And then we'll, we'll, we'll get, <laughs> you're, getting a little, you're getting a little fired up. I love it. <laughs> Uh, and then I want to hear from you, bro, because he can't just answer this. And you can't just be like, <laughs> I want to hear. So, but here's my, you're, are you 30 yet? I'm 32. Okay. You're 32. When you were 16, you didn't have that philosophy. No, I of course not. Okay. Of when you were not. 21, yeah. you probably didn't have that philosophy. Definitely not. I know guys that are 21, they're broke as shit. They're college kids. They don't have this philosophy. And if they think like that, they haven't done anything yet. You're Absolutely. saying you're providing value. When you were in law enforcement, mm -hmm. Did you have that perspective or is that perspective just starting? And then my final part to that is, all right, when you were starting Fresh and Fit, you know, and you were just, dude, we're just, we're starting a pot two years ago, right? How long ago? Yeah. So we had like, our... meaning the, 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 did this conviction happen once fame and cred kind of came? Meaning like, where were you at 21, 25 versus 30 and 32? If you would break that down. You want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, fresh? you go. No, oh. then, and then I go, then you go. Oh, well, I mean, you know, at, at 21, obviously, I was, you know, oblivious to a lot of the, these, you know, realities between men and women, you mm -hmm. know, and as I got older and older and got gained more experience, I was able to figure out. Um, and I didn't really start, like, really figuring this stuff out until my late 20s, early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started, uh, I, I resigned from the government in December 2020. Um, <clears throat> and then we started the podcast. Uh, we filmed our first episode October 26, 2020. So we've been on, what, what, 14, 15 months now? A year and a half. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we've been able to enjoy a lot of success. And when you great, started so. the podcast, bro, yeah. did you have this exact same mindset or was it just kind of the infancy stage of this mindset? Like the polygamous mindset almost. It, it was, it was uh, I believe it, but not to this level of, uh, okay. I, I, I understood it and I, and I accepted it. I just didn't yeah. understand it to this level because, you know, I do a lot of research. Because I'm using your words, bro. Yeah. You said once you reach some value and you become, For you sure. know, a king, a queen, or, not For a sure. queen, but a king a rock star, whatever, then, yeah. all right, like, there, it's no doubt that Drake is banging all types of women, and, and, like, that just happens. Yeah. So this, Drake. this, I'm just saying, <laughs> successful guys, Hugh Hefner, you know, George Clooney, Leonardo yeah, DiCaprio, sure. yeah. it is what it is. We've covered, we've covered Leo. Um, but it, you know, some some goofball twenty two year old who hasn't had a job yet is like, yeah, I, I deserve a bunch of women. It's yeah. like, good luck out there in the marketplace, buddy. I, I would say, so it does. You're saying that it comes with value, fame money, credibility, yeah. status, and these types of yeah. opinions kind of begin to manifest? How does that work? I, I, I would say I was, or I was, um, I guess, how do I say this? I was acting upon my beliefs probably mm -hmm. around 28. Because I, I knew it, but then yeah. I was finally able to start actually like enacting on it, being monog uh, being polygamous, all this other stuff, once I hit around 28. When and, I flew, and when did it Miami. start for you? Okay, uh, and how old are you? I'm 29 right now. Okay. Yeah. So I do believe the similar... Um, uh, do you fully ideology? agree with Myron? Do you However, fully agree with him? I do, but I also have a caveat. Yeah, let's hear it. I believe that I can find one woman eventually mm -hmm. and settle down with her. Now, that might not be now right now. It could be in the future. But having that uh, option to know, okay, you know what? I'm making a choice where I can put aside the woman that I want to just mess around with and find mm -hmm. one woman. I could possibly do that. But maybe, but maybe in the future, though. But not right now. But you, you, do you ever want to get married? 
Uh, eventually, but I'm gonna have multiple wives probably. Straight can up. Can I yeah. ask a question? Real yeah, quick? go ahead, yeah. Amber. Do you care about being liked for your personality at all, or is it just like your status? Like, would you like a woman to be attracted to who you are as a person, or does that not matter to you? <laughs> if you don't reach a certain status, she's not gonna give a fuck about your personality. That's the reality. I don't believe that's true. <laughs> I really don't. Like, I, I know you're living in your male experience, but I live in my female experience and I have okay. female friends. And the first thing that somebody is attracted to is your personality, charm, and your charisma. The assets are benefits, but they are not the end-all be-all. We need to connect in order to feel safe and to be attracted. That's, that's, that's fantastic that you feel that way, but have you ever dated a woman as a man? I have not. Okay, so <laughs> let me so let me, like, let me I was break like, it I down. I had to do some math in so, my head so right let there. Me, for that. Let me break it down. Yeah. The charisma and everything else. Yes, you're 100 percent right. You need to be socially calibrated. You need to be able to speak. You need to have confidence. You need to be ambitious, etc. All these things. However, a woman isn't going to even give you the chance mm -hmm. to play the game unless you're of a certain level. And the more attractive the girl is, the more competitive it must be to be able to even get a shot. There's girls that won't even look your way unless you're of a certain status. So there you can are have girls, all these- But there are other girls too. And I just wanna, like you, you speak so much in generalizations about women and the way they behave. And that's fine, but there are other girls who are attracted well, to personality. Well, the people the who wanna create in the world, they wanna partner to create well, and collaborate Amber, with- Amber, I, let I mean, me ask you and Jenny a question. Are, it, you got a guy, you're dating a guy. He's doing okay, he's fine, you like him, you're into his personality. Okay, that's, that's exhibit A. You, you like him, you're, you love him. Um, there's another guy who's worth way much more money, way much more social credibility, just bringing a lot more quote unquote value to the relationship, to the marketplace. Are you willing to put up with a little, a little bit more nonsense for that guy? Just a little, little bit more? Or is it like, I will not be disrespected. I don't care how much money, how much wealth, how much fame you have. 100%, Adam. How I have never work? dated a rich man. I've always dated creators, people who mm -hmm. are at the same status as me. And maybe that will change. Maybe now that I'm, 28 and I am looking mm -hmm. for somebody who I can settle down with maybe those things will matter more to me I'll give you that I don't know yet because I yeah. haven't at this moment my main okay. priority is connecting with somebody I like and have fun with who respects me if one person put a hand to me I don't care how much fucking money you have okay Absolutely yeah I don't, obviously that's a hand to me or anything disrespectful Jenny you've dated some you know as you've said successful successful men, men guys who got their shit together there's a reason you date I mean kind of to Myron's point there's a reason you date more successful guys and not just, you know, a nice guy that you kind of meet. Or is there anything, like, why would you, do, I guess the question is, why date a successful guy? What do they do to you versus, like, an unsuccessful right. guy? Well, number one, I think, number one in a relationship is respect. Mm -hmm. Whatever that entails, right? If you have multiple women, as long as your women know, I think that's fine. Yeah, me too. Do you like, know what I mean? You're good with that. Yeah, I am too, like, by the way. So it's, you're both good with Myron having multiple absolutely. women. Absolutely. No, if that's okay. what if, he wants and his women know, I yeah. think there's no foul in play, I right? I'm 100% really? in agreement. Yeah, because it's everybody's, just, listen, there's so many There's so many things in this world. He's just, he, he's open about it. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think that's admirable. I just think sometimes maybe his approach with women, like I just met him and like he, I don't know, like certain <laughs> gestures he makes is very like, it's scary. like oh my, it's not, it's not scary. He's a, he's a manly dude. It's not scary, that's yeah. fine. He sits very high in his masculine energy, but I do feel like one day a woman will come and really help bring out a side of you that will do you think create some peace. For someone like Myron, do you think he, have you ever had your heart broken, bro? Who, me? By yeah. a woman? Yeah. Never. Never had your heart Have broken. Have you ever been in love? No, but I've, I've definitely like taken L's with girls and stuff like that too, for sure. Like okay. I'm not going to sit and be like, I've never Wait, been. Wait, what's taking Have I've you taken ever L's. been in love? With a girl? Yeah. Not really, no. With a guy? Have you ever been in love with a man? <laughs> the way only, he has the only on Saturdays. <laughs> but, but right there, right there. Have you ever told a girl you love her? Nah. Got it. Really, okay. bro? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. 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 Wait, hold <laughs> oh God! Here we it's go. Fantastic. My mom actually is the one that is instilled a lot of these beliefs in me. She's the one really? that told me that you know you got to be careful. These women are gonna finesse you, etc. It's actually my mom. Wow! Did she get finessed? No, she actually married the. <laughs> my parents are from Sudan, so okay. she did they, the finessing. Yeah, she she <laughs> married she married my dad, and that was her only partner, and they've been together the entire time. You have siblings? Yeah. Boy, and brothers, were they sisters, were they what? monogamy or no? Yeah, they're monogamous. Yeah. Interesting. You have, so your interesting. brothers or sisters? But my dad wasn't necessarily like rich. Like he came to the United right. States poor and he worked his way up, oh etc. So. Mm -hmm. Right. When, when and he becomes in love, do, your whole perspective wait, is going to change. 
Wh growing up, which which parent did you crave love from more? Your mom or your dad? Oh shit! Look at this. Is this like a <laughs> intervention? Should I should I, uh, should I lie down as well? And you know, you get maybe, the notepad and you write maybe. whatever. What do you see? <laughs> no, I mean like both my parents like they're great. Like um, yeah, I, they both they they're both in my life, and you know I had a strong father figure. And yeah. My mom was a great mom, and she stood at home and took care of us in my childhood. They gave you a lot of confidence. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have really good parents. I tell them all the time. I wow. saw them a couple of days ago. So I love that's that. That's why I, I. This is why I'm like, I'm very grounded in understanding the realities between men and women, and we're not the same. And so your mom taught okay. you a lot of these philosophies. Uh, yeah, and then obviously from my faith, etc. Because yeah. you know, in, in the Islamic culture, you know, men are men and women are women, and they kind of understand their roles. Versus like here in the West, it's a bit more ambiguous. Are you practicing? No, Islam? I'm a crappy no. Muslim. I will admit okay. that. I will not lie on air. But okay. I'm, haram. I'm a haram, but no, I will I will uh I'm haram. definitely you know, I am gonna I'm yeah. slowly acclimating back. Okay, here, and fresh, sure. let's get to let's get to you. How, how have you been in love? Have you been in love? Exactly. No. Wow. Do you guys so believe never, in love? Do you, you guys believe in love? Uh you know what it is? I look at it logically because like for me, of for course. example, <laughs> I can see that there is consideration. There's definitely emotional connections, 100%. However, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I can actually, like, take advantage of. So, for example, I meet someone, right? We connect on a certain level. Mm -hmm. We have an understanding. But I'll never, like, say, oh, I love you so much because I'm going to give you everything off, off rip. I'm going to see who you are over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And then you will tell me who you are. And I can either cut the rope there, right there and then or keep it going. When you say give you everything, do you mean, like, <coughs> financials, assets, or, like, you? Give you all of you? Well, uh, in terms of like financials, like okay. for example, someone, someone, someone you're say, talking about tangibles. Someone may say I love you, right? And they'll do whatever they, they can for you. But that's just kind of like, oh, like maybe I guess lust or maybe like, you know, a feeling versus, okay, logically speaking, I want to see who you are over a period of time. So I'm going to see who you are. And then from that point, I can determine if you're right or die, mm -hmm. if you're here for a moment. And that way I can logically say, you know what? Cool. I'll invest more or less. But to say and I you love never somebody? even had a taste of that at this point in your life. No, I know girls that that loved me. But no, you you haven't had that feeling of like like that drug under drug feeling the you, the serotonin coming through your brain like all logic goes out the window. Have you had that where you just absolutely want this person every day all day? No, it, it's there. But I also can say to myself, okay, cool, that feeling's there, but it goes and comes. It, it, it's not constant. And, and here's another thing too, ladies. Like I see that you guys are trying to like figure out why we have this mindset. You're asking these these questions, trying to pry. The reality mm -hmm. is, love between men and women are, is not the same at all. You know, men. Shout out to Rolo Tomasi. I'm sure you guys might have touched on this, mm -hmm. and I agree with them 100. percent Men love idealistically. Women love opportunistically. I understand the fact that as a man, a woman loves you for what you bring to the table. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Your money, your income, your income, your status, your confidence, your ambition, your cleverness. There's a whole bunch of different things that women look for in a man before they can actually love and submit and want to be with him but for men it's like you know we we love women for real because we don't have as many requirements of you them love as women they. for real that's what you said yeah men men love women idealistically this yeah. is why breakups hurt men way more that's why men commit suicide way more when it comes to suicide so uh, what do you break down what idealistically means as in they it's the closest it, i mean obviously no love is um, unconditional unconditional mm -hmm. but it's the it's the closest to it I, like when a man loves a woman he loves her far harder yeah. than, than she loves him back and so to speak this is why women overwhelmingly uh, you know, initiate divorce and breakups, etc. And why guys have such a time, tough time getting over it? Because when a man loves a woman, he loves her for real. When a woman loves a man, she loves him. I think the stat here what, is that 45, how he makes her feel. Stats are forty-five percent of marriages end in divorce, and women initiate eighty percent of them. And yeah. how many did Damn. men cheat in those relationships? Doesn't change the fact. Doesn't, doesn't change the fact. <laughs> what, it, what is love? <laughs> love so what does love mean to you? What's love got to do with it? Yeah, to do with it. Hey, it's a. Love. It's a bond between two individuals, but, you know, we're not going to sit here and, you know, say it's a Disney fairy tale. Here's the thing, man. I'm just going to say it. I, I, people might say I'm an asshole, whatever. It is what it is. Men put far more at stake when they love a woman versus the other way around. Mm -hmm. So men need to approach it with their eyes wide open and understand that women love you for what you bring and how you make them feel. And if men understand that, it's going to be to their benefit. The last thing a guy needs to do is love women the way that you guys are trying to go with the Disney fairytale type narrative. Because the reality is you, you have far more risk when you get married and or deal with a woman than the woman has with you. Because with the way the family courts are set up, it's set up for you to lose if everything goes out the window. You know, mm -hmm. we know we know 80 percent of divorces, like you said before, are initiated by women. 90 percent alimony paid is paid from men to women. We know women, uh, you know, divorce rate is extremely high in the West in general. So guys need to understand that when you are with a woman and that she loves you, she loves you for what you bring to the table. And I think, you know, even though that sounds horrible, that's just the reality of the world that we live in. You know, women are designed to 
to mate with the strongest male that can provide them security. And if that male can no longer do that, at some point she's going to look to other men and leave him. I think I'm and just bad at add, being a woman. Just to <laughs> add one more layer. Go ahead. You see, we talked about the tender, uh, tender guy, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, every single day is done to men. How is it done? Divorce. So, get this, right? She can play a part, play a game for a period of time. And it's, oh, you know what? I like to just leave because I feel like leaving and get half his money. So we're just saying, for example, mm -hmm. guys should be aware of the issues that could come up if they do leave and just be logical about it. In other words, men cannot afford to love the way you guys are trying to claim with yeah. the, through the Disney fairy tale lens because if they do, they're going to be blinded and not be able to you know, apply their logic. You said, hey, can you, you know, put the logic to the side and just love a girl? Here's no, an article that's for you. Dangerous. Here, here's an article for you guys and you weigh in on for this. Men. Basically, here's it. it says, millions of men no longer want to get married and you can thank the government for that. Here's a story. U.S. News. Uh, the magazine reported that marriages rates, marriage rates have reached an historic low in the last year or two, and with only 6.5 people out of 1,000 getting married. That's the lowest level in 118 years. I'll say that again. The lowest level of marriages in the last 118 years. There have been a rise in men's rights groups. We've heard of female. I've never heard of this in my life. Men's rights groups. You guys probably know about this, such as men going on their own way MG Toe from MGTO? Uh, is that uh, MGTO? Yeah. Yeah. MGTOW. I apologize, <laughs> gentlemen. I'll get, I'll get the verbatim. Apologize, right. Adam. Yeah. I apologize to all the MGTOWs out there. You don't there. want them coming after I you, don't man. Want that, I don't want that smoke. And, and I also, the manosphere, yeah. where men in droves complain about men's unfair treatment in relationships and family courts. To your point, yeah. like we discussed, 45% of a marriage is end a divorce, 80% of women initiate the divorce. Here we go. Men know that they can lose. A lot, and it goes down the list. Money, kids, even their freedom. Some of the times, if they don't pay child support, right? And the courts abundantly favor women over men when the division of assets, um, alimony, child support, all that kind of stuff like that. So, from a male, like, dude, this is stuff that I've never. Actually, I will say, I I was married briefly. I had a prenup, and I was like, oh, nice, you know, good. like we're good to go. Like yeah. whatever happens, we're good. Um, but. Is this essentially what you guys are saying? Is that are yeah. you part of this um, MGTO manosphere? Is this your vibe? What is this? Well, I mean, you know, we, we're familiar with that community. You know, okay. we're we're kind of in our own lane. But yeah. uh, you know, shout out to the guys in the sphere and you know the guys in the MGTO community. They they acknowledge a lot of uncomfortable truths and and yeah. the, and what those stats that you just mentioned is why I said a man cannot afford to go into a relationship with a woman with the Disney fairy tale in mind. They have to be objective <laughs> and understand mm -hmm. that you're taking a huge risk when you marry a woman. Or move her into your place or whatever it is. I agree with that completely. You do? I do, actually. What do you agree with that? I don't think the system is right at all that uh, oh, somebody should get half of what you've earned just because you decided you don't want to be with them anymore. I agree 100%. I don't think really? it's cool. No, it's not. You like, you made a decision to either raise a kid or have a career and hire somebody to raise your kid. You knew that. Unless the guy was like, you're not allowed to have money, like which mm -hmm. we... They did talk about that. A woman who <coughs> makes money is less attractive. So I don't know how that plays into... I did not say that. You said that the woman who's chasing her dreams or making lots of money has attributes that are not, are less attractive to men. You did say that. Yes, on a balance of probabilities, a woman that is successful, there's a high likelihood she will have unattractive traits, therefore making her less attractive. But it is not the mere fact that she makes money that's unattractive. No, no, it's the it's fact the traits that, that the, come from it. Agreed. Yeah. So it is put us in a little bit of a precarious situation here, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't want to be seeming un seemingly unattractive by trying to make money. But if we don't make money, then if something happens in the marriage and then we're divorced, then we're left with a child and no support. So I mean, women always say that, but statistically speaking, and we know this from talking with, you know, th over a thousand women and, you know, thousands of men all across the world, men rarely initiate breakups and or divorce. It's overwhelmingly women that do it. Again, we're not talking about men who cheat. Wait, no, no, hold on. I, I, I think a lot but, of times that but happens. But a man, real quick, a man can cheat on his girl and still love her. That's, that's the difference. <laughs> okay, but then isn't not her right to say, I don't want to be with you anymore if you're cheating on me? Hey, I mean, that might suck, but... Right, so where's the initiative coming from? It's not the girl going, oh, I want to break up. If a man cheats on her, she doesn't feel like he's trustworthy anymore and then wants, initiates the breakup. But it's the woman. It's more the women who are initiating but the it's, breakup. But it's not, it's not infidelity that causes most breakups. It's actually it's financial money. issues. It's money. It's, it's mm. not, 
The, the, yeah, the, like it's yeah, it's not typically cheating. Also, it's, it's a lot of time break, it's financial. That, break that down. You have any stats or what? Anything regarding the financial breakup? I mean, that is an or non uh, um irrecon uh, what's, it's irreconcilable uh, differences. Yes, irre yeah, irreconcilable yeah. differences. But that and that's just kind of like the general catch-all. But a lot of the times, it, it boils down to money as well. Gotcha. Well, speaking so, of money, let's throw, let yeah. me just throw some questions out there, and we're gonna do a rapid fire at the end. So if you don't sure. get yeah uh, every topic, for ladies, gentlemen, how important is it income? For your man, how important is income that your man brings home the bacon? How important is that? on a scale of one to ten? Ten being like, oh, my man better bring home the bacon, and one being like, I don't know, I'll, you know, I'll take care of my man. And then, gentlemen, you're next. Um, for me personally, it's you have to meet me at least halfway or higher. Okay. You know, but like, so I, if you're making a hundred grand, you would not date a guy that makes forty grand. I want to be able to grow from you. So the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair I enough. I want to be able to grow from you. Amber. I hold the people that I date to the same, same standard that I hold myself. And I am currently on a grind and yeah. I am not making money, but I am mm -hmm. pursuing my passion and I have a yeah. lot of energy and you can't look at me and say that I don't work hard. I want somebody who works hard. Mm -hmm. And even if they're not there yet, if I believe mm -hmm. that there's somewhere we can grow and they have dreams and passion and work ethic, then I don't, it's not a requirement for me. So income is not a requirement. Not okay. I, I need to connect with somebody. That is the number gotcha. one thing. Okay. Respect. But you want a guy with ambition though. Absolutely. We talked about ambition. this. Uh, one ambitious, Adam. ambitious Adam. Over here. Gentlemen, how important is income, uh, a woman's income to you guys? McDonald's? We don't care. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, yeah, personally, I, I don't really care if, if she's, you know, making 100 grand or, or you know, 10 grand. What about the personality mm -hmm. that comes with that, though? Yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be a little bit more important as far okay. as, like, is she, you know, useful she or get useless? Get off the couch. And yeah. Okay, hold on. But stay there. You don't care what they make or what they do at all. No, or I mean, really, uh, like, you, as far as like just strictly financial, yeah, financial. Money, no, I don't care. Okay, you? No. no. Have you so, ever lived with a woman? I have. You have lived with a woman. I was married for a year. You were. Yeah. Okay. I've had some long-term relationships. I can tell you this. I've dated. I mean, we all live in Miami. There's very attractive people. I've dated some pretty attractive people. Mm -hmm. There's nothing uh, more unattractive than a pretty girl who sits her ass home all day and does oh, yeah, nothing. For sure. Yeah. Okay. I've been like, all right, you were hot for a little while. Now it's like, what'd you do today? No, I just kind of like laid out by the pool. It's like, I've been grinding my ass off, like, like cold calling all day. Like at the very least, did you cook dinner? No, I can't really cook. It's like, hold on. Yeah. Like she useless. So, so at some point, maybe income doesn't matter, but bringing value matter. You're not just trying to hang. Yeah. You're a smart dude, bro. You're not just trying to hang with the bimbo because she's hot. And we talk right? about that. We talk yeah. about that on our podcast a lot because a lot of girls ask one of the tough yes, questions I learned we a get lot asked is why, why do I get ghosted? And I say, yeah. if a woman gets ghosted, it's not the man's fault. It's the woman's fault. She didn't add and value. She didn't add value. Yep. I learned. She was useless or she didn't bring peace or whatever it may be. But a lot of women tend to blame men for getting ghosted. The reality is guy game is gain attaining the girl girl mm -hmm. game is retaining the guy after you fuck him and unfortunately many modern day women can't do that because they think let me just show up you know throw him some box here or there be pretty etc and that's enough and yeah that'll be enough to maybe get flown out go on a trip here or there whatever it is and get some sexual attention from high mm -hmm. value men but that does not mean that you're going to get relationship relationship type attention and that's where i think the disconnect is by so, the way i will say that i fully agree with the terminology you use you said uh, the guy retain to retain and what, what was the, the so term? so girl game guy game is attaining the girl yes. girl game is retaining the guy yes. after sex, sex yes. which is the key correct which most girls can't do you're you're i, I Checkpoint yeah. for my, I will tell you that. Yeah. Like, from a guy, especially South Beach, you're drunk, and it's like, I mean, we've all been there. You attain the girl, and then, like, a day later, you're just kind of like, mm. yeah. And, and women always, and girls get on TikTok and complain and cry, oh, this guy goes to me or whatever. No, you're fucking useless more than likely. That's why the guy didn't want to talk to you. I, think I won't say useless, but <laughs> a guy. <laughs> I mean, what is it? I'll, I'll just say it. Like, if they got ghosted, they were probably useless. Like, they probably came over, hung out, smashed, didn't clean the place up, didn't help, didn't do nothing, didn't, didn't make them no food, Myron. didn't make them a coffee. Hold on, Adam, I think yeah. the biggest problem here is that yes. girls want these guys, right? Yeah. And they come to the table saying, oh, just take me as I am. I'm not doing anything with my life. I'm just a pretty girl, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just here. He's just saying, for example, hey, that's useless because a pretty face with nothing behind it is useless. Yeah. However... If you add value, let's say I have a business or, for example, you see I have a need in my house or in my work. Hey, mm -hmm. you know what, babe, I can help you with this. That's adding value. So now, as a man, you know what? Sex is cool. She's pretty. And she has value. I want to keep her around. Right, Versus but you don't give us enough chance. That's what we were talking about last night. How do you get enough chance to show you have value? Right or you away. Can 
right no, away. But you, you, it takes more than a day to get to know somebody and how, the, how you but can... But see, here, here's what's important, right? Effort is very important. So for example, right? I can meet you the first day. We connect on a certain level and we vibe, right? Mm -hmm. However, the sex is, is dope. 100% is dope. But after that, what's next? So for example, let's say we, we go on a date, right? We have a great time. We vibe. And then we go out to my crib. Things happen, right? Now, let's say my room is a little bit messy. Or let's say, for example, you see things out of place or like things need, be, need to be folded. I don't know what it is, but like some girls to say, you know what? Oh, you know what? He's not my man yet. I'm not doing shit. But some girls say, you know what? Damn, mm -hmm. I like this guy. Let me clean him after him just to show him that I want to show, show effort. And that by itself, <laughs> damn, it's effort. That's just an example, though. But yeah, I I'm know. showing you. And, and, and it shouldn't be, he shouldn't even have to tell you. But this is, this is the day and age we live where I'm telling, like, you know, because we've dealt with a lot of girls, like a lot of modern day women just think, I'm just going to show up, be pretty, and that's enough. And they get mad when they get ghosted. And what kind of what girls kind do you? Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to ask that. Like, look, I'm sorry, but I was there at Not the table Not all girls are night. like that. Like, I really want to send you some beautiful women your way. <laughs> Like internally beautiful. Yes. Not everything is an exterior it's, it's thing. You're easy. generalizing women. No, no, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> generalizations we have, we is how to. reality operates. We have to. So you guys can say that, but I'm telling you from an objective standpoint as a man and talking with thousands of men and then also talking with women as well, that a lot of women think I just need to come on the date, be pretty, and that's enough, but and I'm going to keep this guy around, and that's not the have reality. Have you guys ever explored? Well, I'm a woman, and I don't think that way. So I just want to let you know, not all women think that. Fantastic, but but it, why don't you guys again, bring up different you, kinds of girls on your shows? Well, like just we bring a, across. We, here's, here's we the thing: we bring of different. We bring women of all artists, different types of demographics, yeah. professions, mm -hmm. income levels, education yeah. levels, age. We, and here's the thing: I'm telling you, it, it, people are probably going to get mad at me for saying this, but just because the hardware is different does not necessarily mean that the software is different. And what I've come to realize is there's underlying similarities between many different types of women. And you might say not all women are like that. Fantastic. You might feel that way. But you don't date women as a man, and but you don't you're not, see. But you're not a woman. That's irrelevant. I deal with them, so I know how but they you're not, operate. You, but you're saying a woman, a woman doesn't fully love. A woman loves you for X, Y, and Z. If you're not a woman, how can you? How know? can you say what a woman loves a man for? The so, same way you so, told me, I can't know what dating so, a woman hold is on, like. Again, Adam just asked you, right? If you can date a guy that doesn't match your requirements for money, right? What'd you say? Your level or above? Yeah. We knew that from the jump. You answered that. We were laughing because we, <laughs> we said we knew the answer. How do we know it? We study you guys Which proves my point every before when I said you can't even play the game unless you're of a certain level, but then you guys want to talk about personality. And I'm saying men can't even play sometimes with certain types of women and won't even get a chance unless they rise to a certain level. And, that's and what I'm saying is, is if that man reaches that level and he's dealing with that woman and she doesn't give him something back and add value, he's within his rights to not deal with her anymore. And if a woman wants to complain and say, I got ghosted, it's probably her fault. Not the guy's fault. It's probably her fault. Do you also okay. think that the like the people in Miami? Miami is literally like that's true. Yeah. A very very specific culture. <clears throat> people Definitely. come here to flex. Women come here for sure to take it. Many 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 women come here to take advantage. Yep. Not all. Okay, I do think that your your um, what's it called when you take a group of people and you generalizing? No, you're like um, a field trip. <laughs> Here's the thing. When you talk to a group of people, I get what you're survey? saying. But yeah, like a is your this, survey. Group. This is this this okay. So what happens in Miami? It's very similar to other major cities in the United States. L.A. and New York, Vegas. It's very similar. I think New the York. The only difference is that the women in Miami are far more attractive than these other major cities. But it does not change the fact that a lot of modern day women operate the same way. And on top of that, and you're speaking you, totally you watch, U.S. Right? Because we said this last night, and you were well, like, here, "Why are you okay. talking about the U.S.?" So, and not so check this out. We have guys that donate into the show with different types of currencies from all over the world that are dealing yeah. with the same problems. And the one underlying thing that they're all in common is that they're from first world countries where feminism is strong. Western culture, Europe, Western Australia. Europe, Canada, Australia. What New are the Zealand, same problems? Men are dealing with the what, same what, problems. What, what, what we're talking about now. That they need to have status in order to get any kind of relationship. Well, n not necessarily. I'm not saying you need status. I'm just saying for some women, right? So the, typically what I found is the most attractive girls typically will only deal with a certain demographic of men. But in general, you know, guys are having a tough time dealing with women in the West in, in overall. And women are having a tough time dealing with men. Because... But their show no, is... But no, look, hold on. I, I, I do want to add this because... Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes the word feminism gets used like, you know, crazy depending on your interpretation of it. Mm. I think we're living in a generation now where women are stepping up and women are are becoming some of them providers for themselves and whatnot. And but what I think is important mm -hmm. is for women to know when to sit in your masculinity or when to sit in your femininity. So you're conditionally It is. You're conditional. What do you mean I'm conditional? So one minute you're masculine, one minute you're feminine. No, we're both. Everybody's both. Everybody's 100%. both masculine and feminine. You both have the... You, you, everybody when has you, testosterone and estrogen. 
Yeah, for Everybody sure. Everybody has it. It's in our, it's in our DNA. No, I, literally. I, 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 so, get, I get what you're saying. So but. what I'm saying is sometimes when women in the work fields go and present themselves, they sit in their masculinity, and some of the dumb, some of them don't know how to come home and sit in that femininity. You know what I mean? That's, Flip the switch. That's a problem. We're complex creatures. You're right. And I, I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm saying for whoever's watching this, like as women mm. who are successful need to learn how to sit in their femininity when need be. But I do think also some men who are masculine do need to learn to sit in their femininity. And you don't have to be, and be empathetic this all the time is what I'm trying to say. Uh, no, do not be vulnerable with women. I, I, I but you've never been, in love. never been in love. You want to do the example? <laughs> women are not built to handle masculine problems. We are the, being vulnerable with a woman is some of the worst advice that modern day women give to men. Because if I sit there and I cry to you, oh my god, my life is hard, blah 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 blah. You might sit there and console me for a bit, but deep down you're like, you fucking bitch, and you're no, gonna go and that find is someone. So not true. I know. <laughs> Huh, so you're saying that what he's saying is incorrect? No, that vulnerability a guy should shows cry, cry in front of Vulnerability is Be so human. powerful. Again, this is a common example of women saying one thing but doing another. They're saying this right now because it's politically correct to say, you can cry to me, you can be vulnerable to me, etc. But deep down, if your man came to you and was crying on your shoulder saying, I don't know what's going on, her I vagina's going to... I would be there gonna, for him. Can me? I finish? Can I finish? If her vagina's going to dry up, she ain't going to want to fuck with him anymore. She's going to look for a stronger, more capable man because women are designed to look for security. Just because they cry once, bro? Hey, man, I can't tell you how many times we've brought girls on the show with yep. their own. They tell us on air, I, one time my boyfriend cried in front of me and mm -hmm. I never looked at him the same. It's like, a, it's like a glass. If you shatter a glass, right, and it smashes onto pieces and you glue it back together... Yeah, maybe it'll work, but when you pour water into it, it's always going to leak. I get more that's attracted when guys cry. Me anyway, too. I, okay. like, that's like the best sex I ever have Fan. when a guy is vulnerable. Have you done a yeah. poll? Uh, let's, do, I mean, let's do a poll here. We're gonna, uh, is it attractive for a man to cry? Are you it's saying not like that it all is? all the time for sure, but when you see your fucking not masculine Not every fucking man, day. That'd be, no. That's some bitch shit. But when, but they, when they're... Once in a while, see, like, here's a big problem yeah. once again, right? You're saying it's okay, right? For you and for you. It might be okay in this moment. However, the, girl, the next girl might say, you know what? Damn. Him even just crying in this moment, I lost interest. So we don't know how far is too far. And that's a problem because you may say it's okay, but she may not say it's okay. You're right. And as a guy, why am I going to make that chance? We're going to say, you know what? I'm going to be the rock. I'm going to be her foundation. And I'm going to be strong for her. But Versus, and oh, I'm going to cry in her face and she might leave. Yeah, because you, you don't know how the girl's going to react because it's a very, it, you, have to love, you have to be in a relationship with a guy, have him cry in front of you, show that inability to provide security, and then how you react, you might not necessarily know how you're going to react. So what we tell guys is, don't be vulnerable with your girl. It's a waste of time. And this quite frankly, such, can I finish? So can I please finish? So the thing is, is that women do not handle masculine problems. Men and women live different realities. Women are not equipped to handle masculine problems. You need to go to your guys and tell them you have issues. You want to cry, cry to them. You have problems you want to talk out, talk it out with them because you cannot show that you're soft or weak in front of your woman because even though women say, oh, well, no, I'm capable of being empathetic. I can understand your struggle, blah, blah, blah. They really don't because when a man cries in front of a woman, it's going to incite a natural reaction of, repuls of, of re uh, revulsion because men that cry and are soft are not attractive and women are hardwired to look for security. This is why guys that are soft and lose frame Mm -hmm. The girl leaves them and goes to another guy that knows what's going on. And it's a very, um, how do I say this? It's a, it's a biological response. You know what I'm saying? Like women are just designed to look for men that are strong. So we tell guys, don't even get, open up Pandora's box and get sensitive around your girl. So don't even don't show do emotion it. ever? Sorry, can't, is it my turn? Are you done? Hold Crying on. and Amber telling her about your problems is not a good move to go. Obviously, you know, being human, being a human, right? You got to have some kind of, you know, social calibration here. Being a human is one thing, but to sit there and cry and tell her about your problems, etc., where it's going to affect her mindset as far as like, damn, can this, is this guy the one? Is he the one that's going to be able to provide me security? You don't want to do that. You want to go to your guy. Let me, let me ask, brother, let me ask you. Sure. Men are more logical. Women are more emotional. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is anybody disagreeing with that statement? No. Okay. Can the logical male be a little emotional? Is that fair? Well, you just said that, that women are not equipped to handle masculine problems, right? That's what you said? Are men, yeah, they're not in a position to help their guy from the struggle. Are men equipped to handle emotional problems without a woman? Like the reverse. I'm talking about the reverse. Yeah, because the difference is if you cry on my shoulder, I'm not going to lose attraction for you. I'm That's talking the about your, the issues in your life in general. Do you not crave support from a woman to be there for you? Like... When a man shows vulnerability, it shows that he trusts me to to share in that moment. And that's the kind of father I want to raise my kids. Somebody who's going to be emotional when my kid breaks down or something bad happens. To not just be like, toughen up, kid. But to, to show empathy. 
to make good humans. That's why I think your show is a little dangerous because you're not telling men to be empathetic or emotional ever. In this world, yes, it, it, it advances with gains, financial gains, all that stuff. But we also have to create a beautiful environment for us to enjoy each other in. And I think those your podcast is super successful because people spend $20 to send hateful comments. You're inciting a lot of hate. But where's the like... <laughs> The good well, energy, on. guys. Let, let me, before you respond, are you familiar <laughs> with the concept, the philosophy of stoicism? Yes. Okay. Would you consider yourself a stoic? Or yeah. No? With yeah, man. You're you, familiar you, with this, Marcus you gotta, Aurelius. You got to be stoic. It's like, because here's the thing: you're trying to say, "Oh, I think that's destructive" or whatever. What we're saying is, we know that most women. And here's the thing, ladies: I need you to kind of get out your own shoes and understand that we're talking about in generalities here, not just you two. If I lined up 100 women, right? And I told a guy, all right, man, each of these are your girlfriend. Go ahead and cry and be vulnerable with them, etc." I would argue that somewhere between 85 to 90 of them are not going to like it. So if there's five or 10 that might like it, mm -hmm. it's a low probability that you're going to be able to successfully be vulnerable without losing your and, girlfriend. And just to so, be clear, you've asked how many women this question? Thousands. We've asked, yeah. And a lot of Literally. them. Literally. And they're able to be honest and say, and hey. And that's what your findings are, 80 plus percent? We're finding that most women hate soft men, whether the guy and a couple mm -hmm. of girls have actually went a step further and admitted, yeah, when he cried in front of me, I never looked at him the same and it kind of killed it. Yeah. And then we've had several women say that. So they can say that now because it's politically correct and we got the cameras on, etc. But behind closed doors, if your boyfriend is crying in front of you being soft, I don't know, I'm going to make the bills, blah, blah, blah. It's not going to be attractive. Masculine problems need to be solved by other men. You need That's why men need a tribe. You go and tell your guys your mm -hmm. problems and you come back home like nothing's going on. You're the stoic rock because women are emotional. You cannot be the emotional one in the relationship because here's the difference. If a woman cries on your shoulder and tells you, oh, I'm having a rough day or whatever, you're in a position where you're not going to lose attraction for your woman for her mm -hmm. being a woman and being emotional. However, if you're in a man and you're being emotional to your woman, she is going to lose attraction for you despite the fact that she says, I'm here for you, baby, or whatever. She's still going to lose attraction and eventually arousal and then leave for another guy. Here's a good example right let's say i'm at work right i have a problem at work i may be possibly like in a position where i may lose my job right i go into my wife and say you know what wife um i'm gonna lose my job i don't know what to do i'm in trouble right that's being more open i'm being more emotional so to speak mm -hmm. she might feel a type of way about that versus if i say for example hey i had a problem at work i resolved it pack your bags we're going on vacation what's a better what's a better outlook for you Oh, those, those two examples. I mean, you're presenting one with a, a reward and the other with a problem. <laughs> hey, I good mean, news. We're going on vacation yeah. or I just got no, no, fired. Yeah, but see, you, I see what you're see, saying. But see, look, I fixed a problem mm -hmm. and then I give her, like, I just go to a reward versus here's the problem. I didn't fix it. What's more sexy? We're talking about sexy? Or, yes, uh, what's more attractive? Or what's, what's more, attractive? more real and more human? Life is fucking hard. Sometimes you're going to have down moments. And I'm, I am an empathetic person. I can understand when a man goes through a struggle. I'm not going to be unattracted to you because you're living life you're and doing your be, best. You're about to be on the street. He can't work anymore. Then what's we're going to figure it out because we're partners and that's what we signed up for. <laughs> that right. sounds great on paper, but it's not how the reality <laughs> Listen, Can I just say one thing? The, the women that you're asking on mm -hmm. your show, mm -hmm. I would really bet that the majority of women who are in a different kind of mindset, don't know about your show. Mm -hmm. They don't know about it. We don't know about it. All of our friends don't know about it because we're living in a different lifestyle. We have different mentalities. The girls who are attracted to that masculine energy are the ones that you're bringing on the show and interviewing. No, we bring on women of all, all different over. kinds, man. They're like, the ones that are your DM, DM, so you can be on our show and get followers and and, uh, and We've clout. brought women from all over the world, from different parts of the country, from different backgrounds, races, mm -hmm. education levels, etc. And I'm telling you, it's very, a lot of women are I will are say that I've seen similar. you speak with Michaela Peterson, who's yeah, a very spoken with. attractive, uh, established woman. I've seen... All the way from her, I would call her a high-value woman, would you not? I don't know if you would describe her as that, but... Are there high-value women? And I would <laughs> say that I've seen some not-so-high-value, a ratchety... But it's point a far is, range. The point is, it's a, it is a large range. I'm not just yeah. saying that it's a... Who are your biggest supporters out there? Like, yo, that's my fucking people! Or who are the people that are like, dude, I can't stand those people? Who, who would you say your biggest supporters and adversaries are out there? Uh, Guys between 25 and 35, you would say? Yeah, I mean, yeah, majority of our audience is men, and it's between, yeah, we got all the way from, like, you know, guys that are teenagers all the way yeah. up to 40, so it's a very mm -hmm. wide demographic, but I would say the majority is in that 20 to 40-year range. So men, single, married, uh, Married men, too. Married men, too. So men, 20 to 40. And the haters, That's, I would say. Yeah, who are the haters? A lot of women that don't understand <laughs> how men think, and they want things. Okay. Like, for example, right? 
they want things to be a certain a certain way, but reality is reality. Like you can't change how mm -hmm. things really are. And as a result, I get what you're saying. Things should be better. We should want to give guys guns and roses, whatever. The point is that like at the same time, we speak in generalities because it's a general population. You can't talk in exceptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can't. can't. Yeah, you can't make exceptions to the rule and like use that as your argument. And here's the thing: I say it too. You ladies might get mad at me for saying this, but women don't know what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to attracting women. Like I'm a woman. That, that's irrelevant because you don't ask a fish how to fish. You ask the fisherman. Women have zero knowledge on how to attract women. As a matter of fact, we do a segment on our show. <laughs> and what we do is we say, you got a week to get laid. I want you to be attractive. And we role play it. The guys act like the girl and the girl acts like the guy. <laughs> Every single time, the girl falls flat on her face as far as trying to attract the guy that's playing as a woman. And here's the thing. We make it very easy. We tell them, all right, tell us the scenario. Six Where foot. are we at? Oh, I'm six foot. I'm at a club and Not I make a million dollars a year and et cetera. Okay, cool. We tell them to pick the scenario. Cool. Yeah. And I say, which club are we at? Oh, we're at Club Live. All right, cool. Then we act like the girl, and we pretty much give similar objections that women give to men all the time, and the yeah. women don't know how to overcome it. Wait, aren't you a woman that knows how to attract women? No, you don't. Because the thing is, is that women only know how to deal with men from a female lens, not how to deal with women from a male lens. Because women have never actually had to go out there and court women and deal with all the objections that women throw at men all the time. And for all the lesbians out there that get mad at me for saying this, a woman is going to tolerate certain behaviors from a woman in a lesbian relationship that she will not necessarily tolerate from a man. Men have a higher expectation of performance when they deal mm -hmm. with women. So when we play this scenario, it's very revealing and it shows nine out of 10 times, women don't know what it takes to actually be attractive to their own sex. What women are your biggest supporters? A lot of married women. Married man. women. Really? Married women are our biggest supporters. Break that yeah. down, why is that? Um, so Actually, we were at Jordan Peterson's um, conference and, and a couple, a couple came, came up to us, to us. Yeah. and it's funny the girl started watching our show with her, with her boyfriend mm -hmm. and she hated us in the beginning but over time yeah. she started saying so you know what damn this is why my boyfriend think, thinks this way and she said you know what I like the show now mm -hmm. and uh yeah, and a lot of married couples too. So like, or uh, a lot of couples watch us because obviously we bring a different perspective. Because here's the thing, I, I get it. We say a bunch of things that are not politically correct and it goes against the grain and everything else. But it's based in reality and how things really operate. Because we live in a, you know, we live in a very politically correct world now where, you know, acknowledging differences between men and women is considered sexist. Oh, newsflash, reality is fucking sexist. But that's a whole other conversation. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that a lot of couples watch us at first, just like he said, the women get mad or whatever. But then they start to realize after watching us, okay, you know what, this is you know, connecting a lot of dots for me that I didn't have answers to before. And I, we get messages from women all the time. Now I'm a better girlfriend. I'm a better wife. We had arguments before, but now I finally understand my husband, etc. Why? Because men can't talk about these issues openly because they're going to get called misogynistic, sexist, insecure. asshole, insecure, small dick energy, whatever shaming language you want to use. So men can't talk about this stuff. So when we bring it up and we say it, we got a bunch of guys behind us, you know, rooting silently like, fuck yeah, finally someone's saying this shit. And they love it because... We're in a certain age range. We're dealing with modern day women that are young and attractive, et cetera. So we're in a perfect, and we talk to women every night. And on top of that, we coach men. So we're in a perfect position to be able to tell guys mm -hmm. the reality of how things go. And women get mad because we reveal the game and we reveal unflattering realities about female nature. Here's the thing though. We say about a lot of negative things about men too. I'm, yep. When we do our daytime shows, I'm calling our viewers fat. I'm making fun of them for being losers, not being financially adequate, et cetera. But no one clips that because when you hold a man to a standard, it's considered, yeah, you should. Man up, motherfucker. But when you tell yeah. a woman, you're a useless bimbo, you don't bring anything to the table outside of sex, oh my God, you misogynistic pig. And I'm here to say, just like men have to perform and bring a certain uh, you know, asset to the table, women do too. But we live in a coddled world where women are able to get away with fucking murder and they think my presence alone is everything. And I'm here to say, no, it's not. This is why so many women get ghosted on TikTok and they complain and cry. And that's what it is. Because men at the end of the day, are the gate gatekeepers to relationships and women don't like that. It is what it is. Like if you want a boyfriend, you're going to have to have girlfriend activities. A lot of girls don't want that. Is there anything that you two don't see eye to eye on? Like aside like do you guys ever say like look We disagree on a lot actually. Yeah, yeah. that's what I want to know. Yeah. Like we're yeah. different. Like, very different. Like fresh, you ever be like Myron, that was a little much, bro. And do you ever say like dude, like man up, bro? Like you know what? <laughs> All the time. What is that like? Uh I think our foundation foundation is pretty much set in our mindset, how we think about relationships and dating. Mm -hmm. However, approach might be a little bit different. So for example, he's more hardcore, more serious, more, uh, I want to say, um, firm. I'm more, you know what? I'm going to let it ride a little bit and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm a little more open in that sense. However, we don't tolerate uh, bullcrap from women. In terms of like, for example, mm -hmm. we don't like, how to put this? We understand how women operate and we're aware of how they move. So we move accordingly. That's how I would say. Awareness. Go. Yeah. Uh, we're, we got about what 10 15 minutes left i know that we got a, you got a heart out um 
Can we have a little light topic right now? And I want to get <laughs> let, let, let's everyone play. Let's party, man. Let's party. We're gonna do relationship expert right now. I got a list of relationships. Yeah. This is gonna be rapid fire. Don't give a you know twenty minute sermon. I'm gonna throw out some relationships. I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind. Anyone can say it. Respect the other person. I'm gonna throw out some relationships. First thing that comes to mind. First sentence, and we'll just go down the list here, and then we'll do a wrap up in about fifteen minutes. All right. First number one. Number one. Uh, J Lo is J Lo toxic. Is she like from what like? Just, I don't know. Just you know, bro. relationship to relationship. You know what? So first word. Thoughts on J Lo? Yes. Old. Recreational Old. use only. Recreational. Ladies, J Lo. Come bucket. Come bucket. <laughs> no. Badass. Badass. J Lo. That was a joke. She wants what she wants. She wants what she wants. Okay. And she Keep has it. the clout to get it now. She Will Smith it. and Jada Smith. Damn. Um. Will Smith simp, um, Jada treacherous. I would say simp. Will Smith. I yeah. would say. Yeah. I'm gonna get up out my seat right now. Regretfully, <laughs> regretfully, yeah. uh, disappointed. It, it, disappointed. It, Will Smith is what so many men deal with in today's day and age. A man that's been emasculated, and we live in a world now where a woman can go yeah. on 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 the internet and blatantly embarrass a, a high-profile movie star at a the red table and profile. say some fuck shit like, we got into an entanglement. Are you serious? But this is, this is the world we Will live in. What should Will Smith have done? He should have dropped there a million years ago, man. A million years ago. Yeah, okay. too late now, though. Like, yeah, it, it's Ladies, just... different opinions on Will and Jada? Anything come to mind? I liked the idea of them both being open and okay. like that being public. Uh, got it. The idea of... like. Both of them having the ability to sleep with other people mm -hmm. and it not being taboo. I think they fucked it up, but um, I liked the idea of it. Yeah, Jenny? I think they understand each other and they've been each other's rock with whatever life throws at them. Okay. Uh, a, a woman sleeping around that's married is unacceptable. Completely but why can't unacceptable. a man do it and not a woman? But they're in an open relationship. Men and if and they're in an agreement... No, they clearly weren't. You saw his face? They were not in agreement. <laughs> All right, let's they were not this is rapid fire, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't have something to say, keep it to yourself. All right, here's another crazy relationship. Kim... And Kanye, and now fucking Skinny Pete. What comes to mind? That's what happens when you marry a thought. I mean, you can't. I mean, yeah, she got famous. He's got from, five kids with her. Yeah, you, you, he, she, or she got kids. famous from fucking and sucking on camera, and this is why you can't wife up those types of women, man. Mm -hmm. I would say can't he made it. it dope for black people, black guys in the, in the dating industry. <laughs> and he made, as a black guy, you I rock with it. But then you, you, now you're messing it up, bro. Yeah. Thoughts on Kim, ladies? Pete, there's music on in the background. I don't know what that is. All right, no, no strong feelings on their relationship at all. No, just for, a no, pretty couple. Okay, so nothing. That Kanye comes West to mind. is a perfect example of why you need to vet your girl and make sure that she's of a certain caliber before you marry her, especially as a higher earning man that's successful and famous. Okay, shout, shout out to Ray J, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> uh, real, real G, boss. He's a boss. George Clooney. Um, I'm not too familiar with his escapades with women, though. He was Leonardo DiCaprio before Leonardo DiCaprio, and now he's married and 60-something. I mean, the classic example of everything that they say. Oh, Those two men are like the poster child for their... Yeah, but those are high value, the highest value right. men out there. Some Agreed, of the so they actors. can have whoever they want and okay. do they I want. would say they uh, have options, and yeah. they use it wisely. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 25 and under. Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott. I'm not too familiar in the relationship, so no? I can't say. I would okay. say teen love. I call, I call it teen love. Aww. Travis Scott? He ain't a teenager anymore, dog. I know, but just, just how they operate. That young gotcha. Love, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. With social Jeff media. Bezos yeah. and his, uh, you know, he divorced <laughs> Mackenzie Bezos. She's one of the top 20 richest women people in the world. Not mm -hmm. even women, like the richest woman in the world. Yeah. And now he's got a new uh, lady, Lauren Sanchez. Thoughts on Bezos? The power of money. Yeah, power 100%. of money. <sighs> Jeff Bezos, I would say. Money personified, but at the same time, it's hard to put into words. Unaware of female nature and made a mistake. Yeah, yeah. That's mm. a, that's a, the, the more money you make, man, the more you need to like be aware of how women operate. Okay. He's unaware. He's unaware. Very unaware. unaware. Yeah. Uh, Very unaware. Barack and Michelle Obama. Goals. Powerful. Powerful couple. Gentlemen. I don't know enough to. You don't know Barack Obama. No, Come no, on. I know. I know who he is, but I don't know about their relationship. To be able I mean, to speak you know in. a little bit. They're Ride together. I, mean, I would say iconic, yeah. but at the same time, I don't know the behind the scenes, so I can't really yeah, say. I don't. I don't know. Goal, 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 goals. You can be president of the United States. Pre Myron, president of the United States and Sudan. Let's just throw that in there. 
<laughs> but you got to be married to one woman. Is that something you'd consider? No, I will not. Bro, do it. come on. <laughs> I will not do <laughs> what it. What are you talking about? I will not do it. I don't. I'm, I, I've, I've protected like you know. If, uh, I've done uh, okay. security details for people when I was on the yeah. job, and that shit is not fun, man. Like, all right, I'm just saying to be person. the number one guy in the world, and just but. Nah, I'd rather be polygamous. Chilling polygamy and is that poly important? I mean, because here's the thing: there's too much risk. How many times do you see senators and you know, guy, pol political guys like in a hotel room with some chick, and True. then they bust them, and he looks all crazy? Speaking so of like, too much risk, thoughts on uh, Donald Trump and Melania Trump? A joke. Yeah, completely. A what? A joke. A joke. Haters gonna hate. Shout out to Trump, man. <laughs> Real G. More power to you. Yeah, yeah but he's married. And he's the president of the United States. He's married oh, well, to one woman now. Well, hey, man, well, okay. he was—he was, uh, you know, he was doing his thing before. So yeah. So as and long as you did your thing is. before and or, settled or down, or who knows, he might still be doing his yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm sure see, he's see, still he's doing getting his a little thing. old. Thing is, sloppy, having bro. the power to make that choice, okay, versus you have to make that choice, is two different things. Yeah, got it. Uh, Jay Z and Beyonce. Gangster. Um, what's the word? <laughs> married man. I'm trying bro. to think of one word. Like, yeah. Hey, that nigga cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I think Solange tried to uh, roll up on him in an elevator. Yeah. Show you can. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, if you same question, president of the United States, and but you had to be married to one woman, would you do it? If I've, if I'm a bit, a bit older, mm -hmm. and I've kind of like conquered what I want to conquer, eh? Okay. Walter. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> uh, but, Cardi B and Offset. Once again, two different strategies yeah, to the same. I hear you. Cardi B and Offset. Um, wiping Clout. a stripper is never a good idea. But Don't wipe up a stripper. It's, it's, I mean, is it possible to turn a hoe into a housewife? Potentially. But, you know, mm -hmm. if you got a 95% chance of failure, should you do it? Probably not. I would say clout move. Potentially. Um, Potentially, yeah. Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. Cute. Familiar? What's going yeah, on? Yeah. Cute? I don't know. I don't know. I only, is I only see them in award shows. shows. Yeah, is there the, something going on? I don't know. About about shows. Oh, machine gun. I don't know the relationship. He, he, okay, I guess here's the question. Single guy, this is a couple of these. Single guy marrying a woman with multiple kids. Oh, stupid. S guy, woman, multiple kids. Yeah. Yeah. If he loves she, her. She has many kids? She's got a couple kids, yeah. Oh, hell nah, bro. With Brian Austin Green. Hell nah, bro. Yeah, um, that's a dub. Single mothers are recreational use only. You don't you don't marry those women. That's that's a bad move for you as a man. Why? Because of the baggage? Because of the kids? Because of the just? There's far too much risk. I mean, you, you, well, we already know that marriage is 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 terrible for mm -hmm. men in general. You get marrying a single mother. Now you're bringing kids into the equation that you're gonna have to provide and protect for that aren't your own seed. And if that woman breaks up with you, now you're gonna get hit with a double whammy of you lose her and the kids that you built an attachment. Is with. Is that the biggest L you can take? It's it's gonna What's be. What's the worst L you can take? Marrying a single mom is very bad. It's not, it's, it's not in your best, as a man, it is not in your best interest to marry a single mother. I know a bunch of mm -hmm. people, oh my God, that's so fucked up. The reality is when you look at it from, from a logical perspective, you take on way too much risk because now you mm -hmm. might lose that woman. And then on top of that, every kid that you build an attachment with, and here's the other part, you have no legal rights to those children because they're not yours. And you I did it, so I know. You did it. Mm -hmm. You married a single mom. Yep. What'd that look like? How'd that work out? Uh, honestly speaking, like it was uh, a cool relationship with me and her. Just that yeah. the other element of the kid being there. Um, one, I was young. I didn't understand what, what it really was. And two, um, they tell you up front, well, some, some of them will tell you, oh, you know mm -hmm. what? Don't worry about a kid. I'm going to take care of him. It's not your responsibility. But over time, it's like, yo, you're going to have to, at some point, chip in or be a part of it. So it's like, as a young guy coming up, if you're single with no kids, honestly speaking, your best strategy is to have a, a woman that has no kids as well. Because mm -hmm. that burden, that's not your burden, can be a lot to to like deal with so I'll and a that. single dad is not the same as a single mom like yeah. a single dad is attractive to other women a single mom is i mean hey she could be attractive but don't take her seriously yeah. is that true do you think are you uh, ladies attracted to single dads dad bod not, vibes not for me no no jenny i've been with a guy that has kids and is it attractive to you like when he's taking care of his kids and doing all that is that what I mean, myron's I loved saying him. that's why i was with him it was okay. that's it love okay love like be with there it is. who you love but she was attracted to him because he displayed social proof of um, having children and being able to provide a provision for them she might not acknowledge that but um all right no, that, that can definitely add value because you see how how he treats a kid and you would want him to treat your kids mm. like that but he asked you were you attracted you know? to that and you kind of like just i was attracted it. to him because of love i didn't know he had kids when i met him okay Speed round, so we here built we go. a connection, and then he told me he has kids. Um, I'm Vlad, sure you knew about the kids prior to you loving him. That's probably true. Prior yeah. to me loving him, but before you said Bella I love, love you to him, you probably knew that he had children and had a former relationship with a woman. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay, so 
he was attractive, then therefore you were like, okay, I can build some of this guy, and then eventually it led to love. But you knew he had kids, which whether you know you want to admit it or not, subconsciously a man that has kids is more attractive because he's able to display, he's able mm -hmm. to protect for, for, protect children. He's um, he's not weird, he's not psycho, etc. This is why men that have dogs are more attractive yeah. because they're able to care for a living creature and he's not a psycho. I will say yeah, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's more attractive or not as attractive, but it, there is an there is an mm -hmm. attraction there because okay. you're seeing how he can foster kids, and yeah. you would hope that he can but, foster but he your kids like that. But he asked you said no. I no, didn't say said no. Yes. I said I said love. She said love. I will I, he, say he that. Said, I, what, what what were you attracted to him by that? Love attracted me. He attracted me. His mm. kids added value to it. Mm. Does that speed, make sense? Speed round, guys. No, Let's keep but it moving. We'll continue. Okay. <laughs> Jenny, you're the one that needs to leave soon. Yeah. Okay. I will say that I frequently, um, consistently borrow some of my best friend's kids and just take them out in the town and just pick up ladies <laughs> with the kids. Uh, Uncle Adam in the house. Just there get a go. dog one. Just get a dog. Or a got, dog. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Dogs are a lot, a lot of very high maintenance. All right. Yeah, last yeah. few. Um, if you forget, we were playing a speed round, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we just went off the Richter's tail. Um, Harry and Meghan. I'm talking about Prince, mother, and Harry and the woman that he married, Meghan Markle. Finesse. Prince. Finesse. He got finessed. Hell yeah. What? Stupid. Stupid. Shouldn't have done it. What would you have done if you're a full on prince of England? What would you do? Just. <sighs> That's tough, bro. I mean, in that position, bro, it's, it's a lot of responsibility. And you, who, you like who you like. However,. Mm -hmm. For the lineage and for my dynasty, bro, that's a dub. That's a dub, bro. Yeah, that's an L, big L. No, no interest in that. All right, last What's few. It, Justin L? Timberlake and just, uh, Jessica L, was. L, a dub, yeah, L. Uh, Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel just got divorced. Does this do anything for you guys? Heartbreaking, heartbreaking. I'm a big Justin Timberlake fan. Me too. Anything? And, and she's such a great woman. Once not, again, not River, Once not again, surprised. things can be good up front. Things might Why? go she bad later stripper? on, and then it's bad. I mean, so. yeah, not surprised. I mean, this is so common. They're both super high earning. She was not a hoe. So why are you not surprised? Like, I, Because let me. who initiated that divorce? Guaranteed it's probably her. Do we know? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll have my, uh, my research or find out. Last few. Okay. Um, Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin. Thoughts on their relationship? She made him better. I don't know enough to. They seem good. I'll say once again, once again, teen love. I mean, Teen love. That that I agree with on that. One. Wait, are they married? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How old is he? Is he like? He's got to be 20 like twenty seven. I would have no. guessed. He's old. He's, he's old. Like twenty. No, he's like twenty eight. Eric, can I get a Justin Bieber age right quick? I think we're uh, the same age. Baby, Eric on baby, the, baby. In today's. Oh my. I say all the time, uh, in today's day and age, you shouldn't be getting married until you're at least 35. That was my man. next question as for you. I, I, yeah. As a man, what age what should you women? consider getting married? So I have, th this is my thing that I tell guys. Yeah. I think 35 years old. 27, I hit it. Yep. 35 years old, had slept with at least 50 women, 100K per year, you're in shape, and uh, you got six months to one year of savings. All right, done. I got to get married. I've done all that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's time. That's it's easy. Time. You're in a position That's to do it now. Light, light work right there for me. Do you have requirements for women? Um, yes. Yeah, what's that? Oh, um, we got more time? I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> Jenny, do we have yeah, more time? This last question. Go ahead. I really got to go. Um, well, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of things, but if I'm going to just sum it up, it all, the most important thing is compliance, and from there, everything can build. Compliance? That's the foundation. That's the foundation, yeah. What does that mean? Compliance um, as in, like, you're just willing to do whatever? Following the rules. Following, following my lead. Because, you know, I always say a man in lead is going to lead that relationship to success if he knows what he's doing versus a woman in leadership role. She's going to lead all right to the mm -hmm. end of the relationship. Everyone has their roles to play. You happy? Like, you're a happy guy. No, I'm actually very hurt. <laughs> very, very hurt. Let's, all, let's hug it out after the show. Um, all right, listen, I, I had a few more, but we can wait. To, we can save those for next time, yeah? Uh, I know we got to go. Um, here, listen, no matter what you think about these guys, love them, hate them, they're doing their thing. So respect to you guys for being yeah, sure. here. Thanks, man. Taking fire. You know, there's you got a lot of supporters out there, certainly some haters. But if you don't have haters, you ain't doing something right. Facts. So Facts. respect to you guys. You're definitely bringing value on the internet. People might agree with you, people might not, but you're doing your thing. So salute to Fresh and Fit in the house. Let me give, uh, let, let you guys give some final thoughts before I wrap this thing up. Go ahead. Hey, this is a cool discussion, man. More intimate, more cool. Uh, you guys are awesome as well. And uh, thanks for coming last night. And uh, yeah, thanks for having us on, Adam. Yeah, it, it was fun, man. I oh, mean, and uh, follow us on YouTube as well, Fresh and Fit. Yeah. Instagram, yeah. Fresh Prince CEO. We'll put the link below. Go ahead, give the shout out to you. Fresh and Fit on. On, on YouTube, yep. uh, Instagram, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. check us out on YouTube, guys, Fresh and Fit, and yeah, thanks for having us. Of course, yeah. brother. Amber, Jenny, final thoughts? 
Um, I think you're both very educated and very well spoken. And I think that you do add a lot of value and you are motivating men to be better in a lot of ways. And I think that's that's very powerful. But? Um, no, but. Oh, well, damn. Okay. <laughs> I was ready for the who no, hurt but you. I, this definitely was easier to have a conversation with you. And um, I do I did think that you do respect and listen, even if you present different arguments. And I think hold on to that as long as you can. I do think that the, the nature of your show of like bringing up the comments and roasting women, it does put them in a little bit of a vulnerable position. And I know you get money, a lot of money from that, but it's hard. To, it's very vulnerable as a woman going on that show and just knowing that you're going to get hate for whatever you say. And then you guys profiting off of it. That made me a little not, uncomfortable. Not necessarily true. We bring on a lot of girls that have been on the show multiple times and the people actually love them. It's just when girls say, mm -hmm. make nonsensical arguments that the chat makes fun of them. And they make fun of us a lot too. Like, I'm, yeah, they I'm roast too us too. I'm too black. Someone put... <laughs> A Bin Laden thingy and sent in a super chat saying that's my uncle or whatever. So it's like we get roasted too. It's yeah. just that, you know, when women come on the show and they say, for lack of a better term, stupid things, yeah. the chat's going to roast them because a lot of times they argue with emotion and not logic and facts. And thank God we have both. I think the world goes around okay. on emotion and logic. We have art and we have money and that's what makes our culture beautiful. And I just wish you like put a little bit more emphasis on the on the good energy and being good people and putting out creative work and not just gains and status and all that i mean we're happy man we're living life they're doing their thing all right jenny uh, your final thoughts and then we'll um, sign this thing out yeah uh thank you for sharing your insight i would definitely in another time like love to sit down and pick your brain and and know where that psychological aspect comes from because it's a great it's a it's a perspective it's and a you good own tool. it and i think it's great that you own your thoughts to be honest because a lot of people don't live their truth so i think that's something that i admire about you guys that you're like living in your truth and owning who you are and that's a really powerful statement Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't think there's any your truth. I just think there's one objective truth, and I think that's something else that's kind of an issue. And in, in uh, like you know, today's modern days, oh, it's my truth, my truth. No, the truth is objective. Your appreciation of the truth, however, is relative. And I think we sit here and try to say everyone's truth is valid, and that's ridiculous because some people are, are stupid. So their truth is irrelevant. It's their that's their perception, but that's not necessarily the truth. So, but what is the truth? The truth is objective. There's one truth. What is and whether and whether and whether you want to appreciate it or not is up to you. But I think a lot of people don't appreciate the truth and they get mad, which is why we have cancel culture, etc. And we acknowledge these uncomfortable truths and people don't like it. But you know, we bring up these these topics and right. But and so you're saying how you think is the how you think is the one truth? Well, here's the thing. I'm pretty close. <laughs> a lot of the things we talk about I'm are I'm always are, just pretty close. Yeah, I'm like a lot of the things we talk about. We're pretty much dead center as far as like. Uh, you know, because here's the thing. We so every, but every man should have multiple women. If they're in a position where they can do it and have the, you know, status and resources and want to do it, they should be able to do it. Yeah. All right. With that being said, we're going to wrap this up here. <laughs> and I think this was a very healthy discussion, debate. I think some emotions came out there. I think some logic was being used. There were certain things that the ladies agreed with with the men. There were certain things that the men could No, they didn't agree with anything no, we maybe, said. Maybe not. But I do like that you guys kind of got the yin-yang thing going on. Not like the yin-yang twins, but like the good cop, bad cop thing going on. But respect to you guys for being in here. I think this was overall a very productive conversation. I'd like to everyone to dap up and just, you know... Be cool with your oh, neighbors. Yeah, dude, trust me. We've, yes. we've been in way yes. worse. Like This and is I, nothing. And, this and, is... I, and I will say this, bro, because um, you said about women who keep coming back. A concern that the ladies had was like, don't throw us under the bus. And this is something that any creator, anyone hosting a show, you're not there to be little women. You want them to come back. Yeah. and be a part of what you're building the, exactly the, the overwhelming majority yes. of women actually do come back of course bring back, and that so, is a testament yeah. to what you're doing and treating them with respect you might have different opinions look i do the same thing on the pbd podcast which i'm on every single time i don't agree with everything that they say but one's a republican one's a democrat one loves trump one hates trump but we're there discussing ideas and this is how the truth can be found and it's on to the viewer to figure out what's what's on for themselves with that being said, fresh and fit, respect to you guys being here. Jenny and Amber, thank you guys for being here. I'm sure you'll be back again, I hope. Um, and we do this every Thursday on Valuetainment Money. We are no longer Valuetainment Economics. We're big team money now. Yeah, we I changed like it. it. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Um, so you can catch us um, every Thursday here. And I know this is t traditionally a financial show, but we're doing a lot more dating, relationships, and how money is intertwined with all that. So we'll see you next time. And remember to save that money. We'll see you next time. Peace, guys. Peace. Got him.